Well, Bajo, Darren, the original Rez was a cult classic, and now we finally have the spiritual successor to it, and it's called Child of Eden. Rez was a unique on-rails shooter originally released in 2001 on Sega's ill-fated Dreamcast console, and later ported to PlayStation 2. There was also a high-definition remake released for Xbox Live Arcade in 2008. Both Child of Eden and Rez are based on the concept of synesthesia, a rare medical condition where people can see colours from sounds, tastes and even letters and numbers. Several famous synesthetes include classical composer Franz Liszt, inventor of AC electricity Nikolai Tesla and founding member of the band Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett. Hmm. It's very interesting, Darren, but here it just means that everything you do is cleverly woven into the music and the world is constantly shifting and changing as the music does. It makes for a very hypnotic experience. Mm. And I imagine someone with that medical condition would have trouble playing this game because it's quite intense. <laughs> Probably. The story goes like this. A girl called Lumi was the first human born in space, and because it's the future, the internet is much bigger and called Eden. And Lumi, for some reason, has been rebuilt in Eden, but finds herself under attack by hackers, or a bad save file, or a virus, or something. And it's up to you to rescue Lumi and Eden. Yeah, this story isn't really much more than a premise for all the crazy graphics. Although, you have to admit, who doesn't love the idea of being inside a computer, flying through cyberspace and cleaning up all those nasty corrupted files? Now the big feature with this game is you can play it using the Kinect. You can use a standard controller as well, and when the PS3 version comes out, you'll be able to use the Move for that too. And I actually found the Kinect was the best option. At first it takes a few goes to get into the swing of things, but once you get your head around it, you feel really powerful throwing clusters of missiles and shooting lasers from your hands. Plus, compared to the controller, I found it was easier and quicker to paint your targets. You can just do these grand sweeping motions over the screen really quickly and accurately. I admit, after about an hour, my arms were getting pretty sore, but I was having so much fun, I didn't care. Mm. And there's actually two ways to play with the Kinect. You can hold your right arm up to lock onto eight missiles and splay your hand open to fire them, while your left arm controls a rapid-fire laser. Alternatively, you can make it so you can use just one arm and clap your hands to switch between weapons. You can also throw your arms above your head to activate a screen-clearing missile attack known as Euphoria. This is a bit disorientating though because your hands control the camera, so every time you use it the camera suddenly tilts up. I mean, it's no deal breaker, but it's definitely the weakest part of the Kinect controls. I kind of like the way that the game ties music with the gameplay. You end up doing this weird laser shooting dance, it's quite clever I think. <laughs> The game itself is broken up into just five levels, or archives, and if you don't die, they will each only take you about 10 to 15 minutes to finish. That doesn't sound like much, and it isn't. Most people will be able to clock this one in just a couple of hours. And that's even with having to replay levels, because completing archives earns you a number of stars, depending on how well you play, and you'll need a specific number of stars to unlock each level. Even the best players won't earn enough on their first playthrough to unlock every level. I'm not a huge fan of the idea of being forced to replay levels just to progress, especially when you need to go back after playing just three levels. But fortunately, it's one of those games that you'll want to replay. Partly because you'll want to hear the great songs over and over, but mostly because you get better every time as you learn the enemy patterns, helping to improve your score. In fact, this game is all about the replays. Your first playthrough is almost a tutorial, really. Yeah, and it actually gets quite tough. It took me quite a few goes to get past that second last archive. But if you just want to enjoy the sights and sounds without the threat of death, there is an option to do that. Although you'll have to unlock the levels the hard way first. And once you get the hang of it, you'll want to up the difficulty, which throws more enemies and missiles at you while also dealing double damage. There's plenty to unlock as well, and there's plenty of reason to. Music videos, artworks, creatures and effects for the title screen, and even visual filters, which change the look quite dramatically. And once you complete the game, you unlock a sixth archive we have to survive for as long as possible. Maybe it ends, we haven't managed to get past level 9 yet. <laughs> And there's leaderboards too, but let's wrap this up, shall we? Final thoughts? Well, I think we could write a whole thesis on the visuals and themes in this game. Like how when you shoot, you tend to create and evolve the world rather than destroy it. Or how it seems to chart the evolution of life from amoeba to spacefaring civilization. It really is a sensory tour de force. But what really matters is it's great fun and it makes you happy. I mean, I do wish there was more of it, but I'm always for quality over quantity, and this is pure quality, so I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. Yeah, it is pretty short, but I think it's a great successor to Rez. And like you say, it, it looks fantastic and sounds great, and I just keep coming back to it to listen to those songs again. Uh, it's my favourite Kinect game so far, so I'm giving it 8.5 out of 10 rubber chickens.